Cambridge Preliminary English Test Six by University of Cambridge ESOL Examinations, in conjunction with Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD One. This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test. Test One. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions, and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture. And put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. Where is the girl's hat? Where's your new hat, Sally? I hope you haven't left it on the school bus. Don't worry, Mum. I put it in my school bag because I was too hot. Are you sure? I can't see it there. You probably dropped it in the road somewhere. Oh, here it is, hanging in the hall. I forgot to take it this morning. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One, where will the friends meet? Hi, it's Maria. Got your message? Yeah, I'd like to go to the movies. There's a film called Light World Two, or a comedy. Don't mind which. Shall we meet outside the cinema? Or I know, at the coffee bar on the corner. We could have a snack before we go in. We could meet at the bus stop. Mum's driving me into town this afternoon to buy some trainers, so I won't have to get the bus. But something to eat first is a good idea. Shall we say six o'clock? Okay. Now listen again. Hi, it's Maria. Got your message? Yeah, I'd like to go to the movies. There's a film called Light World Two, or a comedy. Don't mind which. Shall we meet outside the cinema? Or I know, at the coffee bar on the corner. We could have a snack before we go in. We could meet at the bus stop. Mum's driving me into town this afternoon to buy some trainers, so I won't have to get the bus. But something to eat first is a good idea. Shall we say six o'clock? Okay. Two. What has the girl forgotten to bring? Drink up your coffee. We'll be late for class. <sighs> What are you looking for now? Don't tell me you've left your essay at home. You said you were working on it till midnight. Don't worry, it was the first thing I put in my bag. Look, here it is. I won't be a second. Just checking everything. Pen. Now where did a? I... Oh dear. You'll be able to lend me one, won't you? Keys. Oh, here they are in my pocket as usual. Now listen again. Drink up your coffee. We'll be late for class. What are you looking for now? Don't tell me you've left your essay at home. You said you were working on it till midnight. Don't worry. It was the first thing I put in my bag. Look, here it is. I won't be a second. Just checking everything. Pen. Now where did a? Oh dear. You'll be able to lend me one, won't you? Keys. Oh, 
Here they are, in my pockets, as usual. Three. Which TV program is on at nine o'clock tonight? Because of the ski jumping finals, we're late finishing, so there are some changes to this evening's programs. We won't now show the nature program about the dolphins found near the Florida coast at nine o'clock. Instead, Tim Wong's Chinese Kitchen will be at this time, an hour later than advertised. You can see the nature program at its usual time next week. Now listen again. Because of the ski jumping finals, we're late finishing, so there are some changes to this evening's programs. We won't now show the nature program about the dolphins found near the Florida coast at nine o'clock. Instead, Tim Wong's Chinese Kitchen will be at this time, an hour later than advertised. You can see the nature program at its usual time next week. Four. How will the man book tickets for the show? Shall we go to the boat show? It's on for three weeks, but you need to book if you want to go on the first night because there's a party. Really? Let's go. How do you book? On the internet or by phone, or there's a form to fill in in this week's TV magazine with a discount on each ticket. I like saving money, but the post's always so slow. I prefer to talk to someone when I'm making a booking. Just leave it to me. Now listen again. Shall we go to the boat show? It's on for three weeks, but you need to book if you want to go on the first night because there's a party. Really? Let's go. How do you book? On the internet or by phone. Or there's a form to fill in in this week's TV magazine with a discount on each ticket. I like saving money, but the post's always so slow. I prefer to talk to someone when I'm making a booking. Just leave it to me. Five. What will the man do this winter? Will you go on working as a gardener when winter comes, Jim? You'll get very cold and wet working outside. Well, last winter I took a job in a supermarket. They're advertising for staff again at the moment, but I prefer being in the fresh air, even when the weather's bad. I'd really like to get a job abroad in the sun, but all the ones I've seen need building skills, which I haven't got. So I'll just stay in my present job for the time being. Now listen again. Will you go on working as a gardener when winter comes, Jim? You'll get very cold and wet working outside. Well, last winter I took a job in a supermarket. They're advertising for staff again at the moment, but I prefer being in the fresh air, even when the weather's bad. I'd really like to get a job abroad in the sun, but all the ones I've seen need building skills, which I haven't got. So I'll just stay in my present job for the time being. Six. How does the man want the woman to help him? Sarah, could you do something for me? Well, it depends what it is. I want to clean the bedroom windows this afternoon, but I lent the ladder to John. Could you give me a lift to his house and then bring me back with the ladder? Of course, no problem. Now listen again. Sarah, could you do something for me? Well, it depends what it is. I want to clean the bedroom windows this afternoon, but I lent the ladder to John. Could you give me a lift to his house and then bring me back with the ladder? Of course, no problem. Seven. Which house did the woman stay in? I love these photos of your holiday. Is this the house you stayed in? <laughs> I love the balconies and all those plants growing up the walls. 
Oh, and there's a lovely big swimming pool. Let me see. <laughs> oh, you're looking at the wrong photo. Oh. That was the house our friends stayed in. Oh. Ours was exactly like that one, but we only had the sea to swim in. Here, let me show you a photo of our house. It was just as nice. Now listen again. I love these photos of your holiday. Is this the house you stayed in? <laughs> I love the balconies and all those plants growing up the walls. Oh, and there's a lovely big swimming pool. Let me see. <laughs> oh, you're looking at the wrong photo. Oh. That was the house our friends stayed in. Oh. Ours was exactly like that one, but we only had the sea to swim in. Here, let me show you a photo of our house. It was just as nice. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a news reporter called Angela Bond talking on the radio about her job. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. And today in the studio we have a familiar face on television, Angela Bond, the news reporter. Angela, your job has taken you all over the world, hasn't it? Yes. I've reported from a number of countries in Asia and I've just returned from the United States. I must say, it's good to be able to unpack my suitcase now that the job has brought me to Britain for at least six months. Mm. Is the travelling what you enjoy about the job? It's certainly interesting, but it can be annoying never knowing where I'm going to be next week. For me, the really exciting thing is being somewhere when a big news story is taking place and seeing it develop. Sometimes that can be quite dangerous, but all jobs have their disadvantages. and. Travelling gives me the chance to collect souvenirs. What kind of things? Mostly things for my flat. I'm mad about anything Chinese. And so when I was in Hong Kong, I got a really nice table and some chairs. And in Turkey, I spend a lot of money on carpets. Then I've got pictures and other bits of art from Thailand and India. The flat's getting a bit crowded. Mm, it sounds colourful. Do you have a regular working day? Not really. At the moment, I'm one of the team that reads the evening news, so sometimes I'm on at 6.30 and sometimes at 10 o'clock, but that's at the end of the day. It all starts in the morning at 8.30, when I phone the office to see what has happened and what they want me to go and report on. So you don't have much time for a social life? It's better now I'm in London and can see my boyfriend more often. My sister introduced us. He came round for dinner when I was staying with her a year ago. We have a lot in common. He's a lawyer, and I studied law at university. Also, we've found that we lived in Hong Kong at the same time, although we never met. What do you like to do in your free time? Well, cooking is something new I'm trying, because I can't do it when I'm travelling. But I'm not very good at it yet, so I find it a bit stressful. One of the best things I've bought recently was a boat. And when I want to feel calm and peaceful, I go for a sail on the river. It never fails. Angela, thanks. Now listen again. 
And today in the studio we have a familiar face on television, Angela Bond, the news reporter. Angela, your job has taken you all over the world, hasn't it? Yes. I've reported from a number of countries in Asia, and I've just returned from the United States. I must say, it's good to be able to unpack my suitcase now that the job has brought me to Britain for at least six months. Mm. Is the travelling what you enjoy about the job? It's certainly interesting, but it can be annoying never knowing where I'm going to be next week. For me, the really exciting thing is being somewhere when a big news story is taking place and seeing it develop. Sometimes that can be quite dangerous, but all jobs have their disadvantages, and travelling gives me the chance to collect souvenirs. What kind of things? Mostly things for my flat. I'm mad about anything Chinese. And so when I was in Hong Kong, I got a really nice table and some chairs. And in Turkey, I spend a lot of money on carpets. Then I've got pictures and other bits of art from Thailand and India. The flat's getting a bit crowded. Mm, it sounds colourful. Do you have a regular working day? Not really. At the moment... I'm one of the team that reads the evening news, so sometimes I'm on at 6.30 and sometimes at 10 o'clock, but that's at the end of the day. It all starts in the morning at 8.30, when I phone the office to see what has happened and what they want me to go and report on. So you don't have much time for a social life? It's better now I'm in London and can see my boyfriend more often. My sister introduced us. He came round for dinner when I was staying with her a year ago. We have a lot in common. He's a lawyer, and I studied law at university. Also, we've found that we lived in Hong Kong at the same time, although we never met. What do you like to do in your free time? Well, cooking is something new I'm trying, because I can't do it when I'm travelling. But I'm not very good at it yet, so I find it a bit stressful. One of the best things I've bought recently was a boat, and when I want to feel calm and peaceful, I go for a sail on the river. It never fails. Angela, thanks. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. Questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio programme about some historic places to visit. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Are you interested in history? Well, I'd like to tell you about some of the historic places open to visitors in this part of the country. Let's start with the oldest first. Blackrock Caves have been here for over two million years. And for half a million years, they were home to people and various animals, particularly tigers. You can explore these ancient homes and imagine what life was like for the people who lived there. The caves are open daily from April to October. A special attraction on evenings in August is a walk by candlelight. Don't take this tour if you're afraid of the dark. Next, I recommend a visit to Salter House. This was built by Sir Joshua Salter and dates back to 1765. The Salter family are still living there today. The house became famous in 1982 when the television series Aunt Dorothy was filmed there. The furniture and paintings are well worth seeing, but the attraction nobody wants to miss is the kitchen. This is where Aunt Dorothy cooked her enormous meals and gave advice to anyone who passed through this part of the house. And don't forget to visit the Old Port. You'll need several hours to see everything there, especially if you take a trip along the riverside in an old tram as far as the fishing village.
The guides there all wear traditional costume, and you too get the chance to try on clothes from a hundred years ago. You can buy gifts in the old village stores and eat delicious snacks in the tea shop. If you visit the village factory, you can see how sweets were made a hundred years ago and taste them too. So you see, there's plenty of things. Now listen again. Are you interested in history? Well, I'd like to tell you about some of the historic places open to visitors in this part of the country. Let's start with the oldest first. Black Rock Caves have been here for over two million years. And for half a million years, they were home to people and various animals, particularly tigers. You can explore these ancient homes and imagine what life was like for the people who lived there. The caves are open daily from April to October. A special attraction on evenings in August is a walk by candlelight. Don't take this tour if you're afraid of the dark. Next, I recommend a visit to Salter House. This was built by Sir Joshua Salter and dates back to 1765. The Salter family are still living there today. The house became famous in 1982 when the television series Aunt Dorothy was filmed there. The furniture and paintings are well worth seeing, but the attraction nobody wants to miss is the kitchen. This is where Aunt Dorothy cooked her enormous meals and gave advice to anyone who passed through this part of the house. And don't forget to visit the old port. You'll need several hours to see everything there, especially if you take a trip along the riverside in an old tram as far as the fishing village. The guides there all wear traditional costume, and you too get the chance to try on clothes from a hundred years ago. You can buy gifts in the old village stores and eat delicious snacks in the tea shop. If you visit the village factory, you can see how sweets were made a hundred years ago and taste them too. So you see, there's plenty of things. That is the end of part three. Start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I feel awful. I've got two lots of homework to do today. And all I want to do after school is relax. Oh, it's not fair. Of course you've got a lot. You didn't do any yesterday, did you? No, I didn't. I had football practice. And after that, I was just too tired for anything else. Well, maybe you could do more homework at the weekends so you have time for football and other things during the week. But at the weekend, I often go out with my family. On Sunday, we went to the Science Museum. Oh, it was great. I wouldn't want to miss doing things like that just because I've got homework. Actually, you're quite lucky. I never do anything like that. Homework isn't everything. I'm sure you learnt just as much there. Yes, but I don't suppose the teachers will be interested in that. I've got today's maths to do, and I expect it'll take me hours. I tell you what, you can come round to my house this afternoon and we'll work on it together. I don't know. You're really good at maths. You'll just finish it quickly and I can't do that. It's not a competition, is it? It's more important that we both finish it. And working together will be much more fun. But if I don't do it by myself, I could be in trouble with the teacher. Well, we'll tell her you're finding it difficult and so I'm going to try and help you understand it. I'm sure she won't mind that. All right then. Thank you. Perhaps I'll feel better about maths if you help me. Oh, at the moment, I still don't know where to begin. Don't worry. We'll get there. Now listen again. I feel awful. I've got two lots of homework to do today, and all I want to do after school is relax. Oh, it's not fair. Of course you've got a lot. You didn't do any yesterday, did you? No, I didn't. I had football practice, and after that I was just too tired for anything else. Well, 
maybe you could do more homework at the weekends so you have time for football and other things during the week. But at the weekend, I often go out with my family. On Sunday, we went to the science museum. Oh, it was great. I wouldn't want to miss doing things like that just because I've got homework. Actually, you're quite lucky. I never do anything like that. Homework isn't everything. I'm sure you learnt just as much there. Yes, but I don't suppose the teachers will be interested in that. I've got today's maths to do, and I expect it'll take me hours. I tell you what, you can come round to my house this afternoon and we'll work on it together. I don't know. You're really good at maths. You'll just finish it quickly and I can't do that. It's not a competition, is it? It's more important that we both finish it. And working together will be much more fun. But if I don't do it by myself, I could be in trouble with the teacher. Well, we'll tell her you're finding it difficult and so I'm going to try and help you understand it. I'm sure she won't mind that. All right then. Thank you. Perhaps I'll feel better about maths if you help me. Oh, at the moment, I still don't know where to begin. Don't worry. We'll get there. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test. This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, Test 2. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. How many eggs do you need to make the cake? That cake you made yesterday was lovely. Could you show me how to make one? Mmm, it's really simple. Have you got any butter? Yes, I've got about 100 grams. That's fine. And you'll need 150 grams of flour and sugar. You mix the butter and sugar together, add one egg, mix some more, then add another one. After that, you add some flour, stir well, then put in some more flour. Then you just pour it into a cake tin and bake it. Easy. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Where are the dictionaries? As this is your first visit to the library, I'll show you round. As you can see, shelves are clearly labelled according to subject. Most books you may take home with you, but some, such as foreign language dictionaries, must stay in the library. 
These can be found over there, behind the computers, and it's best if you take them to the desks by the window and study them there. Or you can use these armchairs if you prefer to sit somewhere more comfortable. Now listen again. As this is your first visit to the library, I'll show you round. As you can see, shelves are clearly labelled according to subject. Most books you may take home with you, but some, such as foreign language dictionaries, must stay in the library. These can be found over there, behind the computers, and it's best if you take them to the desks by the window and study them there. Or you can use these armchairs if you prefer to sit somewhere more comfortable. Two. Which evening dress does the woman decide to wear? Why are you taking so long to decide what to wear tomorrow night? The black dress with the long sleeves will be fine. Hmm. Long sleeves are a bit uncomfortable, but yes, it's a nice dress. Trouble is, I've lent my short-sleeved dress to Angela. That would be perfect. It's a long dress with a wide belt. Oh, anyway, let's see what I've got here. Uh, this one, also black, short-sleeved. But it's got white flowers on the sleeves. Oh, why don't you phone Angela and get your dress back? Yes, I think I will. Now listen again. Why are you taking so long to decide what to wear tomorrow night? The black dress with the long sleeves will be fine. Hmm. Long sleeves are a bit uncomfortable, but yes, it's a nice dress. Trouble is, I've lent my short-sleeved dress to Angela. That would be perfect. It's a long dress with a wide belt. Oh, anyway, let's see what I've got here. Uh, this one, also black, short-sleeved. But it's got white flowers on the sleeves. Oh, why don't you phone Angela and get your dress back? Yes, I think I will. Three. What is the man's job now? When I was young, I used to paint. I always dreamed of being an artist, painting pictures for a living, but I didn't do very well at school, and so I left early to join my dad working in the family photography business. After a few years of that, I got bored and felt I wanted to go back and study. That's when I did my degree and teacher training. And I've taught photography ever since, although I still paint in my spare time. Now listen again. When I was young, I used to paint. I always dreamed of being an artist, painting pictures for a living, but I didn't do very well at school, and so I left early to join my dad working in the family photography business. After a few years of that, I got bored and felt I wanted to go back and study. That's when I did my degree and teacher training, and I've taught photography ever since, although I still paint in my spare time. Four. Which calendar will the boy buy? Mum asked me to buy her a calendar. Shall I get this one with pictures of mountains or this one with boats on it? She loves sailing, so get that one. I like that one with wild animals, but I don't suppose Mum would. Mm. And you can't get the one with mountains because she had that last year. Yes, I know. I'll get the one you suggested then. Now listen again. Mum asked me to buy her a calendar. Shall I get this one with pictures of mountains or this one with boats on it? She loves sailing, so get that one. I like that one with wild animals, but I don't suppose Mum would. Mm. And you can't get the one with mountains because she had that last year. Yes, I know. I'll get the one you suggested then. Five. What time will the writer arrive at the bookshop? All fans of Peter Robbins should go to the South Street Bookstore tomorrow afternoon, where Peter will sign copies of his book, Love of Life, and answer questions. He is expected at a quarter past two, 
and promises to stay until half past three, when he has to leave for another appointment. Get there as soon as you can, because if it's anything like Peter's last visit, queues will start to form at quarter to two or even earlier. Don't miss this opportunity to meet everyone's favourite writer. Now listen again. All fans of Peter Robbins should go to the South Street Bookstore tomorrow afternoon, where Peter will sign copies of his book *Love of Life* and answer questions. He is expected at a quarter past two and promises to stay until half past three, when he has to leave for another appointment. Get there as soon as you can, because if it's anything like Peter's last visit, queues will start to form at quarter to two or even earlier. Don't miss this opportunity to meet everyone's favourite writer. Six. What did the woman leave in the restaurant? Hello, back again. Did you leave something behind? Yes, I don't know if you remember, but when I wanted to pay the bill, I couldn't find my purse, so I emptied everything out of my bag to look for it, and that's when I took my keys out. When I got back to the car, I realised they weren't in my bag. Which table were you sitting at? Now listen again. Hello, back again. Did you leave something behind? Yes, I don't know if you remember, but when I wanted to pay the bill, I couldn't find my purse, so I emptied everything out of my bag to look for it, and that's when I took my keys out. When I got back to the car, I realised they weren't in my bag. Which table were you sitting at? Seven. Where is the bicycle? I think someone's stolen my bicycle. I left it by that tree on the pavement, but it's not there anymore. Perhaps it got in my father's way when he was parking his car. Oh yeah, I think you're right. It's on the other side of the road, by that street light. He probably moved it. I'll remember to leave it well away from the tree in future. Yes, and lock it next time as well. Now listen again. I think someone's stolen my bicycle. I left it by that tree on the pavement, but it's not there anymore. Perhaps it got in my father's way when he was parking his car. Oh yeah, I think you're right. It's on the other side of the road, by that street light. He probably moved it. I'll remember to leave it well away from the tree in future. Yes, and lock it next time as well. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a radio interview with Jack Williams, who is talking about a town called Swanton. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Oh, what a wonderful view! I'm here with Jack Williams, who's telling me about his hometown of Swanton. 
Yes, the top of this hill is the best place to see the area. Uh, Swanton is on the coast. Uh, you can see the harbour from here, but in fact the town is built along the River Dean. Uh, this river comes from a lake in the mountains over there in the distance, then flows down to the flatland below us where the town is built. What do you most like about living here? About Swanton? Oh, it's an important industrial town and a port, so there's lots of activity. And there's a forest behind the town with interesting wildlife. But the most exciting thing for me is the mountains. I go climbing whenever I get the chance. What about entertainment? There's plenty of entertainment. A big centre was built last year to encourage the arts, very modern. Uh, it's got a cinema, a theatre and an art gallery. And there's football. Uh, the local team hasn't uh, done so well lately. A few years ago, we nearly won the cup. And our area is famous for music. Uh, not in Swanton itself, but there's a well-known music festival in the next town. But there are problems with the environment. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, the river was a great place for fish, but the water got so polluted by the factories that most of the fish disappeared. Well, we've cleaned the river up now, and the fish are starting to come back. But I'm unhappy about Swanton Woods. The trees are quite healthy, but if you look, there are no birds there, and that's because pollution has reduced the number of insects. Swanton's growing fast. Are you pleased about the way it's changed? Well, you've got to move with the times. It was completely different when I was a boy. Uh, in those days, everybody worked in the factories, and the families all knew each other. Maybe it was a little boring. Today, there are hundreds of different companies and so many new houses that some people don't even know their neighbours. There are disadvantages, but it's impossible to be bored with all the things going on. And what about Swanton's future? Education is important to us. We have a fine university which specialises in advanced technology and a huge shopping centre just built, which is bringing in double the number of visitors. Good news for us. And last year, we improved our airport so more planes can come in. Now listen again. Oh, what a wonderful view. I'm here with Jack Williams, who's telling me about his hometown of Swanton. Yes, the top of this hill is the best place to see the area. Uh, Swanton is on the coast. Uh, you can see the harbour from here. But in fact, the town is built along the River Dean. Uh, this river comes from a lake in the mountains over there in the distance, then flows down to the flatland below us where the town is built. What do you most like about living here? About Swanton? Oh, it's an important industrial town and a port, so there's lots of activity. And there's a forest behind the town with interesting wildlife. But the most exciting thing for me is the mountains. I go climbing whenever I get the chance. What about entertainment? There's plenty of entertainment. A big centre was built last year to encourage the arts, very modern. Uh, it's got a cinema, a theatre and an art gallery. And there's football. Uh, the local team hasn't uh, done so well lately. A few years ago, we nearly won the cup. And our area is famous for music. Uh, not in Swanton itself, but there's a well-known music festival in the next town. But there are problems with the environment. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, the river was a great place for fish, but the water got so polluted by the factories that most of the fish disappeared. Well, we've cleaned the river up now, and the fish are starting to come back. But I'm unhappy about Swanton Woods. The trees are quite healthy, but if you look, there are no birds there, and that's because pollution has reduced the number of insects. Swanton's growing fast. Are you pleased about the way it's changed? Well, you've got to move with the times. It was completely different when I was a boy. Uh, in those days, everybody worked in the factories, and the families all knew each other. Maybe it was a little boring. Today, there are hundreds of different companies and so many new houses that some people don't even know their neighbours. There are disadvantages, but it's impossible to be bored with all the things going on. And what about Swanton's future? Education is important to us. We have a fine university which specialises in advanced technology and a huge shopping centre just built, which is bringing in double the number of visitors. Good news for us. And last year, we improved our airport, so more planes can come in. That is the end of part two.
Now turn to part 3, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a woman talking on the radio about a singing course she attended. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I've just come back from a short music course called Singing for Beginners. It was at Brownstoke College, which is just to the north of London. A woman called Lena Phipps runs these three-day courses for people with no previous experience of singing. Lena used to be an opera singer, but no longer appears on the stage. Nowadays, she occasionally sings in jazz clubs, but spends most of her time teaching. She was excellent. There were only nine of us on the course I attended, five men and four women, and Lena never takes more than ten students on a course. This means that everyone has lots of attention and plenty of opportunity to sing. We were all very nervous at the beginning, but every class begins with some exercises to help students relax. These are followed by warm-up exercises to improve the quality of the voice. During the three days, students learn around 20 songs in a variety of different styles, depending on the interests of the class members. There are classical and modern songs, including pop songs. By the last day, everyone was confident enough to perform their favourite song on their own. I would really recommend this course. Brownstoke College is an old building surrounded by a beautiful garden. Accommodation is very comfortable, the single and twin rooms are clean and warm, and three meals a day are included in the cost. A cooked breakfast, lunch and an evening meal. The lunch is very good and the salads can be recommended. Courses begin on the last Tuesday of the month, so the next one begins on the 24th of September and continues until Thursday the 26th of September. I would advise you to reserve a place early because it's certain to be very popular. Now listen again. I've just come back from a short music course called Singing for Beginners. It was at Brownstoke College, which is just to the north of London. A woman called Lena Phipps runs these three-day courses for people with no previous experience of singing. Lena used to be an opera singer, but no longer appears on the stage. Nowadays, she occasionally sings in jazz clubs, but spends most of her time teaching. She was excellent. There were only nine of us on the course I attended, five men and four women, and Lena never takes more than ten students on a course. This means that everyone has lots of attention and plenty of opportunity to sing. We were all very nervous at the beginning, but every class begins with some exercises to help students relax. These are followed by warm-up exercises to improve the quality of the voice. During the three days, students learn around 20 songs in a variety of different styles, depending on the interests of the class members. There are classical and modern songs, including pop songs. By the last day, everyone was confident enough to perform their favourite song on their own. I would really recommend this course. Brownstoke College is an old building surrounded by a beautiful garden. Accommodation is very comfortable, the single and twin rooms are clean and warm, and three meals a day are included in the cost. A cooked breakfast, lunch and an evening meal. The lunch is very good and the salads can be recommended. Courses begin on the last Tuesday of the month, so the next one begins on the 24th of September and continues until Thursday the 26th of September. I would advise you to reserve a place early because it's certain to be very popular. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four, questions 20 
Chapter Twenty Five. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a man, Marco, and his wife Sarah about a film they have just seen at the cinema. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have twenty seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. So, what did you think of the film? Hmm, I didn't know what it would be like. I wasn't very keen to see it when you suggested it, but I'm pleased I came now. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. And it was great to see scenes of London in the background. I'm sure I recognise the hotel where we stayed last year. Hmm. I wasn't sure it was London at first, but then I recognised the place we stayed too. It was nice to see it, wasn't it?、Mm. <laughs> oh, my legs are stiff from sitting for so long. <laughs> Over three hours, wasn't it? At least. I didn't notice the time going by at all, though. I was interested in the film. I thought it was good. And I usually hate long films. I often find them a bit boring. Well, the man sitting next to me didn't find it as interesting as you did. Did you see? He fell asleep after fifteen minutes.、Oh, <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> And the two women in front kept talking right through the exciting bits. I couldn't concentrate. I was really angry.、Mm, it's a shame they talked when the main actor was on screen. I can't remember his name, but I liked his acting. He was brilliant.、Mm, you're right. He must be a new actor. I haven't seen him before. He's obviously going to have a great career.、Mm. And the director's really good too. I think I prefer the other films he's made, though. His earliest one was probably the most entertaining. Oh, I must see that then. Perhaps we could get it on DVD. Good idea. We could stop at the shop on the way home and see if they've got it. Right. Now listen again. So, what did you think of the film? Hmm, I didn't know what it would be like. I wasn't very keen to see it when you suggested it, but I'm pleased I came now. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. And it was great to see scenes of London in the background. I'm sure I recognised the hotel where we stayed last year. Hmm, I wasn't sure it was London at first, but then I recognised the place we stayed too. It was nice to see it, wasn't it?、Mm. <laughs> Oh, my legs are stiff from sitting for so long. Over three hours, wasn't it? At least. I didn't notice the time going by at all, though. I was interested in the film. I thought it was good, and I usually hate long films. I often find them a bit boring. Well, the man sitting next to me didn't find it as interesting as you did. Did you see? He fell asleep after fifteen minutes.、Oh, <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> And the two women in front kept talking right through the exciting bits. I couldn't concentrate. I was really angry.、Mm, it's a shame they talked when the main actor was on screen. I can't remember his name, but I liked his acting. He was brilliant.、Mm, you're right. He must be a new actor. I haven't seen him before. He's obviously going to have a great career.、Mm. And the director's really good too. I think I prefer the other films he's made, though. His earliest one was probably the most entertaining. Oh, I must see that then. Perhaps we could get it on DVD. Good idea. We could stop at the shop on the way home and see if they've got it. Right. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.
That is the end of the test. Cambridge Preliminary English Test Six by University of Cambridge ESOL Examinations, in conjunction with Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD two. This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, Test Three. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions, and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. How did the woman get to work? Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. I missed the bus. I was trying to decide whether to walk or go back and get my bike when I saw my neighbour. Luckily, he offered me a lift because he works near here. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. What regular exercise does David do at the moment? You're looking well, David. Have you been to the gym a lot recently, or something? Well, I joined a gym earlier this year, but I stopped going. It was just too difficult and expensive too. I've done a lot of swimming instead, and I feel much better for it. It shows. I'm thinking of taking up tennis again. Would you be interested in a game one day? You used to be quite good, didn't you? Well, I haven't played for a long time, but why not? Now listen again. You're looking well, David. Have you been to the gym a lot recently, or something? Well, I joined a gym earlier this year, but I stopped going. It was just too difficult and expensive too. I've done a lot of swimming instead, and I feel much better for it. It shows. I'm thinking of taking up tennis again. Would you be interested in a game one day? You used to be quite good, didn't you? Well, I haven't played for a long time, but why not? Two. What should Susie take to Emma's house? Susie, it's Emma. We've got to make some paper flowers so the classroom looks nice for the end of term party. Can you come to my house this evening to help me do it? There's some paint left over from last time, but I can't find any brushes. Have you got one? Bring it if you have. And if we have a pair of scissors each, we can work faster. So don't forget yours. We'll need coloured paper, but I'm getting that from college. See you around six. Now listen again. Susie, it's Emma. We've got to make some paper flowers so the classroom looks nice for the end of term party. Can you come to my house this evening to help me do it? There's some paint left over from last time, but I can't find any brushes. Have you got one? Bring it if you have. And if we have a pair of scissors each, we can work faster. So don't forget yours. We'll need coloured paper, but I'm getting that from college. See you around six.
Three. Which kind of T-shirt did the boy choose? Look, it's your present. Just choose a T-shirt and then you can have anything you like printed on it. They've got three types, a picture like this one with boats on, or there are some with words. And this type has shapes on it. Well, I really don't like writing. It makes me feel like an advertisement and those pictures are awful. Right then, I know which one you'll choose. Now listen again. Look, it's your present. Just choose a T-shirt and then you can have anything you like printed on it. They've got three types, a picture like this one with boats on, or there are some with words. And this type has shapes on it. Well, I really don't like writing. It makes me feel like an advertisement and those pictures are awful. Right then, I know which one you'll choose. Four. What frightened the man? How was your camping holiday in Africa? Oh, fantastic. We saw all sorts of wildlife. You know, lots of lions and all that. Wasn't it frightening with all those animals so close to your tent? Oh, not really. To be honest, what scared me most were the bats. They flew so close at night. I thought I'd be frightened of all the other things, like elephants. But in the end, I wasn't, because we only saw them during the day. And they were mostly quite a long way away. Now listen again. How was your camping holiday in Africa? Oh, fantastic. We saw all sorts of wildlife. You know, lots of lions and all that. Wasn't it frightening with all those animals so close to your tent? Oh, not really. To be honest, what scared me most were the bats. They flew so close at night. I thought I'd be frightened of all the other things, like elephants. But in the end, I wasn't, because we only saw them during the day, and they were mostly quite a long way away. Five. Where is the man calling from? Hello, Mary. Could you come and collect me? I went to a client's house by taxi and I can't get one back. Sure. Where are you exactly? You know the bridge over the river on the North Road? If you go over that and take the first left, you see a bar on the right. I'll be waiting there. I'm actually in the farmhouse down the road from there at the moment. Mrs Collins has been kind enough to let me use her phone. Fine. See you in the bar soon. Now listen again. Hello, Mary. Could you come and collect me? I went to a client's house by taxi and I can't get one back. Sure. Where are you exactly? You know the bridge over the river on the North Road? If you go over that and take the first left, you see a bar on the right. I'll be waiting there. I'm actually in the farmhouse down the road from there at the moment. Mrs Collins has been kind enough to let me use her phone. Fine. See you in the bar soon. Six. How did the woman spend her last holiday? You're looking well. How was your holiday in the mountains? Not so good. I hurt my foot on the day I arrived, so climbing was just impossible. While everyone else was going off to the mountains, I stayed and read a book by the hotel pool. Not my idea of a good holiday. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, at least you had a good rest. Is your foot better now? Not really. I sit and watch television a lot and try to be patient. Now listen again. You're looking well. How was your holiday in the mountains? Not so good. I hurt my foot on the day I arrived, so climbing was just impossible. While everyone else was going off to the mountains, I stayed and read a book by the hotel pool. Not my idea of a good holiday. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, at least you had a good rest. Is your foot better now? Not really. 
I sit and watch television a lot and try to be patient. Seven. Where is the girl's purse? Mum, I'm just off to the shop. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my money? Oh, I found your purse lying on the table earlier, so I put it back in your bag. Well, it's not in there now. Maybe it's fallen on the floor somewhere. Can you help me look under the sofa? That's where I was sitting a minute ago. Just a minute. Let me check. Oh, yes, look, it is in here after all. <sighs> I told you that's where I'd put it. You just didn't look properly. Now listen again. Mum, I'm just off to the shop. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my money? Oh, I found your purse lying on the table earlier, so I put it back in your bag. Well, it's not in there now. Maybe it's fallen on the floor somewhere. Can you help me look under the sofa? That's where I was sitting a minute ago. Just a minute. Let me check. Oh, yes. Look, it is in here after all. <sighs> I told you that's where I'd put it. You just didn't look properly. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a radio interview with a ballet dancer called Elena Karpov, who is talking about her life. And career. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. My guest today is the star of the London Ballet Company, twenty-two-year-old Elena Karpov. Elena, you were born in Bulgaria. Did you always want to be a dancer? Well, I was a very lively little girl. So at the age of seven, my mother sent me to gymnastics classes. When I was nine, I went on to ballet lessons, and from that moment, I knew that I wanted to spend my life dancing. Two years later, when I was eleven, I won a place at the New York Ballet School. So you had to move to the United States.、Mm. Did you miss your family? Oh yes. At first, it was difficult being away from home and not knowing a lot of English, but it taught me how to look after myself and not to depend on others. There were other Bulgarian students there, and we actually found it quite easy to learn enough English to take part in the lessons with the other students.、Hmm. Tell us about your latest role with the London Ballet Company.、Hmm. I'm going to dance the part of Cinderella. It's a story about a poor girl who marries a handsome prince. My parents used to read it to me when I was little. I'd never seen the ballet before, but I already knew the music really well. I'm sure children will love the ballet. What do you do when you're not practicing or performing?、Uh, before I joined this company, I spent two weeks going round London as a tourist. I don't have time for sightseeing now, but I love trying on the latest fashions with my friends. I'm always buying new jeans and trainers. I'm not too keen on discos and nightclubs. I dance enough during the day. You must have lots of fans. Quite a few. They always ask for a photograph of me, but unfortunately, I don't have many to give away. 
I sometimes sign their programmes instead, and if I can, I give them one of the flowers I've received from the audience. They always ask for tickets, <laughs> but of course that's not possible. What's been the best thing that's happened in your career so far? Well, I've been a guest dancer with ballet companies in Moscow and Vienna, and I appeared twice on television in Bulgaria and met the president. I shall never forget that. But the most satisfying thing for me is that I'm paid for doing what I really enjoy, dancing. Elena, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Now listen again. My guest today is the star of the London Ballet Company, 22-year-old Elena Karpov. Elena, you were born in Bulgaria. Did you always want to be a dancer? Well, I was a very lively little girl, so at the age of seven, my mother sent me to gymnastics classes. When I was nine, I went on to ballet lessons, and from that moment I knew that I wanted to spend my life dancing. Two years later, when I was 11, I won a place at the New York Ballet School. So you had to move to the United States. Mm. Did you miss your family? Oh, yes. At first it was difficult being away from home and not knowing a lot of English, but it taught me how to look after myself and not to depend on others. There were other Bulgarian students there and we actually found it quite easy to learn enough English to take part in the lessons with the other students. Hmm. Tell us about your latest role with the London Ballet Company. Mm. I'm going to dance the part of Cinderella. It's a story about a poor girl who marries a handsome prince. My parents used to read it to me when I was little. I'd never seen the ballet before, but I already knew the music really well. I'm sure children will love the ballet. What do you do when you're not practising or performing? Uh, before I joined this company, I spent two weeks going round London as a tourist. I don't have time for sightseeing now, but I love trying on the latest fashions with my friends. I'm always buying new jeans and trainers. I'm not too keen on discos and nightclubs. I dance enough during the day. You must have lots of fans. Quite a few. They always ask for a photograph of me, but unfortunately I don't have many to give away. I sometimes sign their programmes instead. And if I can, I give them one of the flowers I've received from the audience. They always ask for tickets, <laughs> but of course that's not possible. What's been the best thing that's happened in your career so far? Well, I've been a guest dancer with ballet companies in Moscow and Vienna, and I appeared twice on television in Bulgaria and met the president. I shall never forget that. But the most satisfying thing for me is that I'm paid for doing what I really enjoy, dancing. Elena, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part 3, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a group leader talking to some students who are going to visit an important athletics event in Birmingham. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Right, everyone. Some important information about the three college trips before the end of June. Firstly, we're all going to Birmingham to see the International Athletics Championships. That's the only trip we've planned during March because I know that April is such a busy time for students. We're going on the 15th. 
For those of you who haven't heard of this event before, it's the largest single sports competition in Britain, so we're really pleased that we're going. 140 different national teams will take part, which means you'll see 520 world-class sportsmen and women there, and you'll be amongst thousands of other fans. The stadium seats 17,000. We'll be leaving here early, and we've decided to go by train this time and not hire a coach because we got delayed in traffic jammers when we went to Birmingham before. I hope everyone's pleased about that. Next, someone asked me what to take. Firstly, what not to take. Leave your cameras behind because taking photos is forbidden, but you must have your identity card with you, as we've bought a group ticket and you may need to show it. Mobile phones are OK, but you'll have to turn them off during the event, so it's probably better not to take them. If you want to read some more about the event on the internet, go to Birmingham's website. Then look for the word Burr Info in the page index. That's spelt B-I-R-I-N-F-O. Oh, you'll find all kinds of information about the championships there. As for our trip, I don't have the final details of journey times yet, but I will by this afternoon. So I think I'll write an information sheet with answers to all your questions on it. You'll get copies of this on Friday, so you can read through everything over the weekend. Right, the second trip will be... In Now listen again. Right, everyone. Some important information about the three college trips before the end of June. Firstly, we're all going to Birmingham to see the International Athletics Championships. That's the only trip we've planned during March because I know that April is such a busy time for students. We're going on the 15th. For those of you who haven't heard of this event before, it's the largest single sports competition in Britain, so we're really pleased that we're going. 140 different national teams will take part, which means you'll see 520 world-class sportsmen and women there, and you'll be amongst thousands of other fans. The stadium seats 17,000. We'll be leaving here early... And we've decided to go by train this time and not hire a coach because we got delayed in traffic jammers when we went to Birmingham before. I hope everyone's pleased about that. Next, someone asked me what to take. Firstly, what not to take. Leave your cameras behind because taking photos is forbidden, but you must have your identity card with you, as we've bought a group ticket and you may need to show it. Mobile phones are OK, but you'll have to turn them off during the event, so it's probably better not to take them. If you want to read some more about the event on the internet, go to Birmingham's website. Then look for the word Burr Info in the page index. That's spelt B-I-R-I-N-F-O. You'll find all kinds of information about the championships there. As for our trip... I don't have the final details of journey times yet, but I will by this afternoon. So I think I'll write an information sheet with answers to all your questions on it. You'll get copies of this on Friday, so you can read through everything over the weekend. Right, the second trip will be... In that is the end of part three. Now turn to part 4, questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear two friends, a boy, Rolf, and a girl, Maria, talking about the jobs they would like to do in the future. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct... Put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, 
put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. What do you want to do when you leave college, Rolf? I haven't decided yet, Maria. I might go travelling for six months and then look for a job. How about you? I hope to start work straight away. Do you know where? Well, I'd prefer to live near my family, but I want to see the world too, so I'd hope to have plenty of trips for work. You could get a job with an airline company. Mm, that'd be great, but it's hard to get into. I know lots of people apply for that kind of work, but you're good at languages. I'm sure they'd accept you. I hope so. Have you really not decided what job you'd like? It's difficult. M my degree's in music, but I definitely don't want to be a music teacher. I'll probably look for something completely different. Oh, that's a shame. Why not become a music teacher? You'd get long holidays. But if I got a job in business, I could earn far more money. Lots of people say money doesn't matter and you should just find a job you enjoy. But I think a job has to pay well so you can live comfortably. Mm, that's exactly how I see it. Do you think you'll have lots of different jobs before you find a really good one? I expect so. No one finds the perfect job immediately. I'd like to find a job I really like and stay with the same company for at least ten years. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. Your father has his own business, doesn't he? Yes, but I don't want to work for him. But he could help you set up your own business. Oh, I couldn't imagine doing that. I know how many hours my father has to work. Hmm. Your free time's important to you, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. Right. <laughs> Now listen again. What do you want to do when you leave college, Rolf? I haven't decided yet, Maria. I might go travelling for six months and then look for a job. How about you? I hope to start work straight away. Do you know where? Well, I'd prefer to live near my family, but I want to see the world too, so I'd hope to have plenty of trips for work. You could get a job with an airline company. Mm, that'd be great, but it's hard to get into. I know lots of people apply for that kind of work, but you're good at languages. I'm sure they'd accept you. I hope so. Have you really not decided what job you'd like? It's difficult. M my degree's in music, but I definitely don't want to be a music teacher. I'll probably look for something completely different. Oh, that's a shame. Why not become a music teacher? You'd get long holidays. But if I got a job in business, I could earn far more money. Lots of people say money doesn't matter and you should just find a job you enjoy. But I think a job has to pay well so you can live comfortably. Mm, that's exactly how I see it. Do you think you'll have lots of different jobs before you find a really good one? I expect so. No one finds the perfect job immediately. I'd like to find a job I really like and stay with the same company for at least ten years. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. Your father has his own business, doesn't he? Yes, but I don't want to work for him. But he could help you set up your own business. Oh, I couldn't imagine doing that. I know how many hours my father has to work. Mm. Your free time's important to you, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. Right. <laughs> that is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test. This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test. 
Test 4. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. How did the woman get to work? Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. I missed the bus. I was trying to decide whether to walk or go back and get my bike when I saw my neighbour. Luckily, he offered me a lift because he works near here. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 1. What did the thieves steal? What exactly is missing, sir? I thought the thieves had taken the television set because it wasn't in its usual place in the dining room. Then I went to check my CD player and CDs. Uh, I keep them on an antique chest of drawers. All the CDs were on the floor with the CD player, but the chest had completely disappeared. It wasn't in the garden either, which is where I found the television. Right, sir. Well, can you give me a detailed description of it? Now listen again. What exactly is missing, sir? I thought the thieves had taken the television set because it wasn't in its usual place in the dining room. Then I went to check my CD player and CDs. Uh, I keep them on an antique chest of drawers. All the CDs were on the floor with the CD player, but the chest had completely disappeared. It wasn't in the garden either, which is where I found the television. Right, sir. Well, can you give me a detailed description of it? Two. What present will they take? We ought to take a present if we're staying for the weekend. Let's get something a bit different. People always take flowers and it's rather hot for chocolates. What about something for the children, like a DVD? Or some unbreakable glasses they can all use outside or on picnics? Good idea. And let's get a jug to go with them. The children have probably got lots of DVDs. Now listen again. We ought to take a present if we're staying for the weekend. Let's get something a bit different. People always take flowers and it's rather hot for chocolates. What about something for the children, like a DVD? Or some unbreakable glasses they can all use outside or on picnics? Good idea. And let's get a jug to go with them. The children have probably got lots of DVDs. Three. What will the woman eat tonight? Hotel York. Hello. I'm staying in your hotel tonight and I'm arriving quite late, about 10.30. Will there be any food available in the hotel? 
I'm afraid the restaurant closes at ten o'clock, but the bar does burgers and chips until midnight. And there's always the pizza place opposite, which stays open late. Or we can bring sandwiches to your room if you prefer. Fine. I won't want to eat burgers or pizza at that time of night. Now listen again. Hotel York. Hello. I'm staying in your hotel tonight, and I'm arriving quite late, about ten thirty. Will there be any food available in the hotel? I'm afraid the restaurant closes at ten o'clock, but the bar does burgers and chips until midnight. And there's always the pizza place opposite, which stays open late. Or we can bring sandwiches to your room if you prefer. Fine. I won't want to eat burgers or pizza at that time of night. Four. How much will the girls' ticket cost? I'm travelling from Banbury to Whitney tomorrow, and I need to be there about ten in the morning. Can you tell me when the trains leave and how much a single ticket is? The eight thirty-five train gets in at nine forty. That's twelve pounds sixty-five for a single. The train after that leaves at nine ten. And arrives at ten fifteen. That costs less because you're travelling after nine. The fare is ten pounds forty five. I'll take the second train. Just after ten is fine. Thanks. Now listen again. I'm travelling from Banbury to Whitney tomorrow, and I need to be there about ten in the morning. Can you tell me when the trains leave and how much a single ticket is? The eight thirty-five train gets in at nine forty. That's twelve pounds sixty-five for a single. The train after that leaves at nine ten, and arrives at ten fifteen. That costs less because you're travelling after nine. The fare is ten pounds forty-five. I'll take the second train. Just after ten is fine. Thanks. Five. What is the grandmother's job now? My grandmother always wanted to be a teacher when she was a little girl, but she had to leave school when she was fourteen and help her mother clean offices and shops. When she was in her thirties, she went to college. But she had to work as a waitress in the evenings to pay for her studies. A few years later, she finally got the job she'd always wanted, and she's done it ever since. Now listen again. My grandmother always wanted to be a teacher when she was a little girl, but she had to leave school when she was fourteen and help her mother clean offices and shops. When she was in her thirties, she went to college, but she had to work as a waitress in the evenings to pay for her studies. A few years later, she finally got the job she'd always wanted, and she's done it ever since. Six. Which button has the boy lost? I've lost a button on my favourite shirt. I could see that it was loose when I put it on last night. If it was the one on my pocket, you wouldn't notice. But on the collar, it's different. It's easy to see that it's missing from there. Why don't you take one off your sleeve and use that? Here, you'll need some scissors. Be careful you don't cut the material. Okay. Will you sew it on for me? Do it yourself. It's easy. Now listen again. I've lost a button on my favourite shirt. I could see that it was loose when I put it on last night. If it was the one on my pocket, you wouldn't notice. But on the collar, it's different. It's easy to see that it's missing from there. Why don't you take one off your sleeve and use that? Here, you'll need some scissors. Be careful you don't cut the material. Okay. Will you sew it on for me? Do it yourself. It's easy.
Seven. What will the man do first? Before we start painting, I'll wash the kitchen floor because it's really dirty. It'll be easier if you sweep it before you do that, Nick. I'll carry on cleaning the windows. Okay, and then we can start painting the walls. Now listen again. Before we start painting, I'll wash the kitchen floor because it's really dirty. It'll be easier if you sweep it before you do that, Nick. I'll carry on cleaning the windows. Okay, and then we can start painting the walls. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear Sarah Brown talking about her work as a television weather forecaster. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello, I'm Sarah Brown, and I'm here to tell you about my job as a weather forecaster. I've been a weather forecaster for a television company for seven years, and two years ago I became the head of the weather department. Now I divide my time equally between presenting weather forecasting on television. And managing the weather department, which has a staff of eleven. At thirty years old, I'm the youngest ever head of weather, and the first woman to do the job. Since our news and weather service goes out all round the world, we all take turns to work at night. I prefer that to doing the show when I have to get up at four in the morning. I normally work an eight-hour day. And in that time, I do ten or twelve forecasts. Before doing a weather forecast, I study data on the computer. This is the information I use in my forecasts. There isn't much time to learn what I have to say, but fortunately, I've never forgotten my words, so I don't get nervous. My husband and I try to have the same free days, but neither of us has a regular pattern of work. He's a pilot on long-distance flights, so although he works hard, he has a lot more time at home than I do. We moved to our present house about a year ago, and he's enjoying painting it. I took up flying as a hobby five years ago. I hope to get my pilot's license this year, but because of the job, I haven't been to the flying school for ages. For exercise, I swim and ski, and I like running. I'm really proud of myself for running in the London Marathon. It's a 40-kilometer race, and I never thought I could manage it. My husband plays tennis, and we sometimes play together. But he's better than me, so I never win. Because I'm on World News, people sometimes recognize me in really distant places. Once in an Indian village, an old man took me to have my photo taken with all his family. I get some lovely letters. One person wrote to say that my smile made her feel happy all day. People occasionally even write and ask me to marry them. Now listen again.
Hello, I'm Sarah Brown, and I'm here to tell you about my job as a weather forecaster. I've been a weather forecaster for a television company for seven years, and two years ago I became the head of the weather department. Now I divide my time equally between presenting weather forecasting on television and managing the weather department, which has a staff of 11. At 30 years old, I'm the youngest ever head of weather and the first woman to do the job. Since our news and weather service goes out all round the world, we all take turns to work at night. I prefer that to doing the show when I have to get up at four in the morning. I normally work an eight-hour day, and in that time I do ten or twelve forecasts. Before doing a weather forecast, I study data on the computer. This is the information I use in my forecasts. There isn't much time to learn what I have to say, but fortunately I've never forgotten my words, so I don't get nervous. My husband and I try to have the same free days but neither of us has a regular pattern of work. He's a pilot on long-distance flights, so although he works hard, he has a lot more time at home than I do. We moved to our present house about a year ago, and he's enjoying painting it. I took up flying as a hobby five years ago. I hope to get my pilot's licence this year, but because of the job, I haven't been to the flying school for ages. For exercise, I swim and ski, and I like running. I'm really proud of myself for running in the London Marathon. It's a 40-kilometre race, and I never thought I could manage it. My husband plays tennis, and we sometimes play together, but he's better than me, so I never win. Because I'm on World News, people sometimes recognise me in really distant places. Once, in an Indian village... An old man took me to have my photo taken with all his family. I get some lovely letters. One person wrote to say that my smile made her feel happy all day. People occasionally even write and ask me to marry them. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part 3, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio talk about holidays in Northumberland. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Good morning. This morning on holiday time, I want to tell you about the cycling trip I took recently to Northumberland in the north of England. Before I went, I read a book by Peter Green whose title is Cycling Around Northumberland, which I found really useful when planning my route. Northumberland is a beautiful area of England and perfect for cycling. There is very little traffic on the roads and plenty to see and do. For example, why not visit a castle? More of them are open to the public here than in any other part of the country. While I was there, I actually stayed in a flat in a castle, but there are many hotels, cottages or bed and breakfast places to choose from. In the summer, it is important to book in advance, but I recommend going in the spring, as it is not so difficult to find somewhere to stay at that time of the year. You will find that some places are closed in winter. Most of the small towns in the area have cycling centres where you can hire a bicycle. A week's hire will cost £35, two weeks will be £55. There is also a deposit of £50, which you get back when you return the bicycle. 
Try to plan your holiday when there is a local event or festival happening. I went in June and was lucky enough to go to a festival of local food. Every August, there's an international festival of music, but you'll find something going on in almost every month of the year. Ring the Northumberland National Park if you're interested in finding out about their activities. They have a program of guided walks, photography, and bird watching. Ring them on double eight double o four six. Now listen again. Good morning. This morning on holiday time, I want to tell you about the cycling trip I took recently to Northumberland in the north of England. Before I went, I read a book by Peter Green, whose title is "Cycling Around Northumberland," which I found really useful when planning my route. Northumberland is a beautiful area of England and perfect for cycling. There is very little traffic on the roads and plenty to see and do. For example, why not visit a castle? More of them are open to the public here than in any other part of the country. While I was there, I actually stayed in a flat in a castle, but there are many hotels, cottages, or bed and breakfast places to choose from. In the summer, it is important to book in advance, but I recommend going in the spring, as it is not so difficult to find somewhere to stay at that time of the year. You will find that some places are closed in winter. Most of the small towns in the area have cycling centres where you can hire a bicycle. A week's hire will cost thirty-five pounds. Two weeks will be fifty-five pounds. There is also a deposit of fifty pounds, which you get back when you return the bicycle. Try to plan your holiday when there is a local event or festival happening. I went in June and was lucky enough to go to a festival of local food. Every August, there's an international festival of music, but you'll find something going on in almost every month of the year. Ring the Northumberland National Park if you're interested in finding out about their activities. They have a program of guided walks, photography, and bird watching. Ring them on double eight double o four six. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. Questions twenty to twenty-five. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a girl called Julia and her father about choosing a course at university. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A. For yes, if it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have twenty seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. So you had better decide which university course you're going to do, Julia. You really can't delay this much longer. But I'm in no hurry, Dad. It's ages before I have to decide. The main problem is that I know I'd really love to do business studies, but a lot of my friends say it sounds so boring, especially my friend Anna. What's she going to study? Film studies. It does look exciting in comparison. I can see that business studies might sound dull to your friends, Julia, but you know that's far from the truth. I know. And don't forget that with business knowledge, you might find it much easier to get a job at the end of your degree. I'm sure your friend Anna will enjoy doing film studies, and if she's lucky, she'll get a job she enjoys. But there aren't many jobs in the film industry, so. If I were her, I'd look for a different course. You're probably right, but it is what Anna wants to do. 
Oh, I find it really difficult to decide. You don't think that business studies will be a bit too hard for me, do you? <laughs> of course not. And did I tell you, Jim Brooks said he'd employ me in their accounts department in the summer holidays if I chose business. I told him I really liked working with numbers. And of course, I always got good marks in maths at school. Not like French, which I never did well in. Well, what about considering economics? That might interest you more, and you might find a job working for an international bank or something. I'd never have thought of that, Dad. No one at college has ever suggested economics. I'll go and look up some information on the internet right away. You're such a help. Thanks. No, listen again. So, you had better decide which university course you're going to do, Julia. You really can't delay this much longer. But I'm in no hurry, Dad. It's ages before I have to decide. The main problem is that I know I'd really love to do business studies, but a lot of my friends say it sounds so boring, especially my friend Anna. What's she going to study? Film studies. It does look exciting in comparison. I can see that business studies might sound dull to your friends, Julia, but you know that's far from the truth. I know. And don't forget that with business knowledge, you might find it much easier to get a job at the end of your degree. I'm sure your friend Anna will enjoy doing film studies, and if she's lucky, she'll get a job she enjoys. But there aren't many jobs in the film industry. So if I were her, I'd look for a different course. You're probably right. But it is what Anna wants to do. Oh, I find it really difficult to decide. You don't think that business studies will be a bit too hard for me, do you? <laughs> of course not. And did I tell you, Jim Brooks said he'd employ me in their accounts department in the summer holidays if I chose business. I told him I really liked working with numbers. And of course, I always got good marks in maths at school. Not like French, which I never did well in. Well... What about considering economics? That might interest you more, and you might find a job working for an international bank or something. I'd never have thought of that, Dad. No one at college has ever suggested economics. I'll go and look up some information on the internet right away. You're such a help. Thanks. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test.